Greetings. This is the man who pretends to be Charles Darwin, and I'm going to talk to you today about flowers. They're not just pretty. Now, in order for a plant to successfully reproduce, most of them have to be pollinated. Some plants do that just through the wind. The wind carries the pollen. That's the case with the cottonwood trees that are around here in this natural area. But then a lot of flowering plants have showy flowers. And showy flowers are an investment. They're not just pretty. If they were just pretty and they didn't do the plant any good, then the plant risks extinction because it's wasting its resources on something that it doesn't need, that doesn't bring it any benefit. But flowers are a shrewd investment on the part of many plants. Now, what the flowers do is they provide nectar and pollen to the pollinators. You see, the pollinators aren't going to come and do this service for free. The pollinators want something out of it, and what they want is food, that is, nectar and pollen. And what the pollinators do is they learn to recognize certain kinds of flowers, and they find that if one type of flower rewards them, they will go find another flower of the same kind because they can be fairly certain that that flower will also give them a reward. And so pollinators specialize on certain types of flowers. This is a trumpet creeper, and its pollinator, most of the time anyway, is hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love red. Hummingbirds also have long bills, so they can stick their bills down into the bottom of the flower, and that's where the nectar and the pollen are located. Now, bees cannot see red. To them, it's just kind of a boring gray color, we think. I guess we don't really know, do we? But a bee could crawl down in there, but perhaps not crawl all the way, or why would it do so? It hardly notices a flower that is the color red. Also, these showy flowers have to be a signal from far away so that a pollinator can see it from some distance off and come to it. Also, even the season of flowering is important for the pollinators. The flowers have to be produced at the right season. See, flowers are an investment on the part of the plant, and the correct investment will provide the plant enough of an advantage that even if it's just a narrow margin of advantage, that could be enough to have it survive, reproduce, and win in the game of natural selection, whereas some others wouldn't. See, there are two ways to fail in the game of pollination. One is to not produce enough of a floral investment. The other is to produce too much. Any flower that was too big or too fancy would represent too much of an investment on the part of the plant, and it wouldn't be able to make up for that by the pollinators that it receives. I'm writing a book on this subject, but meanwhile, while that book is being written, I hope that you can go out into the forest, into the open areas around the forest, and look at it in a new way, to see flowers not just as pretty, but as a silent struggle for advantage among the plants. This is the man who pretends to be Charles Darwin. Tally-ho, and amen.